Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 2024 Highs and Lows Tour. Welcome to Holderness School. Um, we're very, very fortunate. We want to thank uh, uh, the Holderness leadership team for allowing us to, to be here at this beautiful campus today. So maybe a, a round of applause for Holderness. And while we're recognizing a school, we'll, we'll recognize a couple other partner schools. Do we have any Bobcats in the room? All right, how about some Hornets? I know that Proctor's well represented here too. Thank, thank you for the Proctor folks for bringing, uh, bringing a couple of vans for SAG vehicles and showing up in full strength. And certainly thanks to the Bobcat, uh, a lot of riders and people on committee. Um, but we are gonna have a wonderful day here. Um, and we want to just uh, recognize that everybody that's here is really contributing to the objectives that we're trying to uh, accomplish. Um, first off, we're trying to uh, raise awareness about mental illness and suicide prevention. We are also trying to destigmatize mental illness. We are trying to also raise funds in New Hampshire. And uh, Eric Skinner will give an update on that in a little bit. Really nice progress to share. And then the last objective is just to have fun, to come together as a community and, and uh, and have some uh, uh, fun cycling together because we know that exercise makes us feel feel better. So, um, going to be a great day. Um, we want everybody to hang out afterwards. We're going to have some wonderful stuff going on uh, out in the outfield here with resource groups and food trucks and, and uh, all sorts of uh, to do. Um, for those of you that um, do not have. Uh, and just in, in terms of lunch, we'll have a food truck out here. We're also going to have Kona ice, so all sorts of uh, uh, great things to enjoy. Uh, and so without further ado, we're going to get our, our program going. And I'm going to introduce Rob Pass because we have a new tradition that we're going to uh, start at the Highs and Lows Tour. And that is to have a Grand Marshal. Rob is going to explain the, 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 the point behind this. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a, we're gonna have a lot going on today, so I'm gonna make this really quick. Uh, 42 years ago this year, I walked into a guidance, counsel, guidance counselor's office as a freshman at Plymouth Area High School, that's what it was known as back then, and I uh, curled up into a ball and wept. And I didn't know why, I thought I knew why, whatever triggered me at the time, but there was a woman in there who, um, I don't know what's going on with this echo. Uh, behind it, got it. All right, so I don't know what was going on, but I, I went into this office 42 years ago, wept, and there's a lady in the back who, um, who was my guidance counselor. Her name is Gail Wiltsey. Gail, Gail's giving hugs back there. And here's the thing, this was before anybody used the term mental illness or mental health, but Gail, even though it was her job, she did something that very few people call in their job, she loved. And that love has planted a seed that has brought me here today. I'm still alive. Gail, please come up. Welcome our first ever Grand Marshal, Gail Wilson. by a lot of love here today. Um, the topic of mental oh, illness sorry. is special Perfect. to me too. I am named after my father's sister who committed suicide. I had an aunt and a cousin who died in an institution and my dad struggled with depression. So I'm very familiar with that topic. So I'm so happy that all of you are here to do writing and raising money for such a valuable cause. I'll be hollering right up, writers up very soon. So anyway, enjoy your day. You got sunshine, rain's gone, go for it. So up next is, uh, is the reason we're here, embodied by one human in a person, and you couldn't pick a nicer human to be up here representing. This is uh, Kristen from NAMI. 
Um, so Kristen, take it away. Thank you, that's very kind. Um, as Rob said, I'm Kristen Welch. I'm the Director of Development at NAMI New Hampshire, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Um, and just a huge thank you to all of you for being here today. On behalf of all of us at NAMI New Hampshire, you really have no idea what a transformational impact you all being here and raising money and raising awareness has on our organization. And a huge thank you to the volunteers who have organized this event today. They are so humble, but I have really had the pleasure over the last three years of working with them and seeing the, how much they pour their hearts and souls into this event. So. Thank you, you guys are amazing. It's truly an honor to work with you. We are so grateful for everything that you do. Um, so if you're not familiar with NAMI New Hampshire, we are a nonprofit grassroots organization. Our mission is to improve the lives of all people who have been affected by mental illness, suicide, and co-occurring disorders. We do have a resource tent out there today, so if you're here later, come check it out, come get some resources. There's information in your bags. Um, but we do that work by providing free support, education, and advocacy services. And all of our services are free because of events like this and people like you who are making donations and fundraising and helping us to keep those services in the community at no cost to people who need them. And what I really like to say we do at NAMI New Hampshire, though, is that we really, we give people help and we give them hope. And we do that when they are in their darkest days and they truly need people. Um, we served over 50,000 people last year, just for a frame of reference for you. When I started working at NAMI New Hampshire in 2018, we served 21,000 people. So that number has grown a lot, and I think that's attributable to a number of factors, but most of all, I think it's because people are talking about mental health. All of you today have created an opportunity to start a conversation, to let your friends know that you support them, to let people know that it's okay not to be okay, and that it's okay to talk about it and it's okay to find help and hope. Um, so thank you for doing that because that is a true gift and we are appreciative of all of that work that you're doing. So, you know, at, one of the really amazing things about New Hampshire is that our work is done by a network of over 200 statewide volunteers. These are people who have had their own lived experience with mental illness and suicide and they are brave in sharing their stories to help other people and let them know they're not alone and let them know that it does get better and let them know that there is hope at the end of the day. And sorry, I'm gonna get choked up, but I'm just truly grateful every day in my work that I get to meet people who do that work and you know, it's truly amazing. And you're about to hear from one of them today. So I'm really proud to introduce my friend, Michelle Thompson, who is one of our Survivor Voices speakers and she is going to share her story with you. Hey, hi there, I'm Michelle Thompson. Just gonna put it out there, I'm feeling a little less brave today. Um, I will start with my story and introduce you to my dad, who was a local here. Um, we are right around the anniversary of his death, July 30th of 2016. So first, I wanna thank you all for being here today and for your commitment to addressing a crucial topic that affects so many lives, including my own. I'm honored to share my personal story and the memory of someone profoundly important to me, who's my dad. Speaking here today is particularly significant for me as I look out at members of the community who on July 30th were touched directly by my dad's death. My dad, like many here, graduated from Plymouth High and was passionate about making Plymouth the place where he raised his family, the same community where I now raise my family with my husband. There are individuals in this audience, and I won't get choked up here, um, including those who fielded my first phone call following the news, players he coached, first responders who supported my family, and friends. I recognize that those of you that knew him have your own personal stories and memories, and I honor that. And I also wanna share with those of you who didn't know him a little bit more about him and a little, about our a little bit about our story. In sharing his story with those who didn't know him and through our shared experiences with those who did, I hope we find strength in supporting this cause and making a difference. Apologies if you can see my hand going a little shaky here. For me, my father's passing has illuminated how interconnected we are and how mental health struggles can affect anyone, regardless of how strong or unbreakable we may seem. My dad was a force. He was known for being goofy and fun, yet also very tough. 
he was not always an easy person. Uh, he was not always an easy person. There was one thing I knew for certain, though. If you needed something, you could call on my dad. Long after his children graduated, he remained a constant presence at PRHS football games, never missing a chance to support the team. His dedication went beyond just watching from the sidelines. He was actively involved in coaching throughout the years and was always there to lend a hand and show up for others. He was there through triumph triumphs and losses, successes and failures, highs and lows. My dad was a connector. He hosted a pre-game fo pre uh, fall football barbecue each year that became legendary. His barbecue ribs were so popular that friends would show up with empty to-go containers in tow just to try to get the extras for the week ahead. It was a little bit of a, a fight there. These gatherings were more than just good food, laughs, and drinks. They fostered a sense of belonging and community. The phrase, all were welcome, took on a whole new meaning one year, way back before the ring camera systems were in place, when we received a call from Plymouth Police Department. They had recovered my camera from an individual who had walked into our home, blended in with the group, and stolen it off the counter. Yes, a little unsettling, creepy, but it was the perfect example about how much my dad's generous come on in personality extended beyond his immediate family and friends. It was the more the merrier in those afternoons. And it's a reminder of how open and inviting our home could be, and my dad was. When I transferred to a school in Connecticut during my junior year, the change was dramatic. Coming from a tight-knit community where my dad was a central figure, his absence was deeply felt. I'll never forget traveling to upstate New York for my first field hockey game with my new school. Nervous and surrounded by unfamiliar faces, I looked up and saw my dad there. He had traveled over six hours to be there for me. This is a man who was up before five, out the door for work and home after dark. His presence was his love language, and even now his dedication continues to expire, inspire me. Our relationship was not without its challenges, however. We had intense disagreements, often difficult to navigate. I now understand that some of these struggles stemmed from our similarities. Reflecting on this, I see that these challenges were a part of the complex bond we shared. Understanding this has given me a new perspective and a deeper appreciation for our connection and the love he had for me. In the aftermath of losing my father, I've experienced many struggles. Some days are filled with cherished memories and a lot of joy, small victories, and others are overshadowed by grief and pain. This journey is not linear. It's a series of highs and lows, moments of progress, and times of setback. Even in despair, we have the opportunity to grow and to make a difference. And by sharing my story with you all, I hope to inspire others to move forward, seek help, and support one another. Pain and trauma and of suicide loss and mental health doesn't go away, it lives on. Trying to find answers to the whys can be consuming. Although I don't have all the answers, I do know that the discomfort of asking the difficult questions and leaning into those uncomfortable conversations can be something that potentially saves someone else's life. You don't need to have all the answers or provide a fix, just being present is impactful. Acknowledging and witnessing these struggles is healing, it's medicine. There are no small things in this effort. Through my own struggles, I've learned to commit to getting 1% better every day. My missteps and challenges have shaped me and I'm no longer ashamed of my past failures. Instead of focusing on rewriting history, I strive to improve and model the value of leaving others a little bit better than we found them. And losing my dad has equipped me to do so and to be a better parent, for that I'm grateful. I'm proud to be here with you all and grateful for the opportunity to share my father's story with so many, including my own children, who actually haven't heard me speak, so this is special for me. Um, my hope is that by sharing my experiences, I can offer some comfort to others, challenge the stigma around mental health, and foster compassionate dialogue. As the saying goes, when we deny our story, it defines us. When we own the story, we can write a brave new ending. Today we gather not only to remember those lost or to create space for those, for those who might be struggling, but to build a future where few, fewer people face such pain alone. We work both big and small ways to break the stigma surrounding mental health and encourage open conversations. Everyone deserves to be heard and to be seen. And at some point, everyone will face a time of need. Please don't ever underestimate your ability to make change or impact another's life. Sometimes just knowing someone cares can make all the difference in the world. Thank you for joining me in this important conversation. 
and you know, knowing life isn't perfect, but it can be incredibly sweet, which I learn more and more through the eyes of my kids. Together, through the highs and lows, we can make a difference and support each other on the journey forward. Thank you so much. Good morning, my name is Matt Drexel and I'm an Air Force veteran. Um, every day, on average, we lose 18 veterans to suicide. In 2012, the number was 22. It's progress, but we still have a long way to go. NAMI New Hampshire is doing a lot to that end, to help with that problem. Over the last year, we've made an effort to reach out to the veteran community. We wanted to personally invite veterans to participate with the highs and lows this year. If you're a veteran, I'd like to just take a moment and ask all the veterans in the room to stand with me to be recognized. Thank you. In addition to reaching out to veterans, we've also been reaching out to the military veteran groups throughout the state of New Hampshire, including the New Hampshire Office of Veteran Services, uh, State Veterans Advisory Committee, uh, the American Legion, specifically post-27 in London, Derry gave us a, a very generous donation, and uh, the VFW. And with us today from the VFW is A.J. Coro. He is the president of the New Hampshire chapter of the VFW. Thanks, man. Good morning. Um, I'd like to say I'm actually here for my daughter, Hannah, who struggled with mental health uh, issues uh, throughout her 28 years. And for my brother, Peter, um, who took his life in 1982, and Thursday he would have been 70 years old. Um, I'd like to present this check uh, from the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, um, because as Matt said, we lose on average 18 to 22 veterans a day uh, to suicide. And groups like this, New Hampshire NAMI, who are trying to help that issue um, and reduce suicide and mental health issues is absolutely incredible. An incredible resource, uh, a resource that I've used, and my partner Kelly is actually a facilitator for the NAMI Seacoast group. But thank you all for being here today. Thank you, very generous, thank you. And for all the veterans here, thank you for your service. I hope that you guys enjoy the day and have some camaraderie and have some good times with the riders today as well. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Good morning. Uh, my name's Eric Skinner. Um, I guess I'm the, I'm the money guy. I'm the money guy, the CFO, I guess. Big names here. Um, thank you guys all for coming. Um, this has been, um, I guess, third year running at the amount of support and the outreach, I think, is incredible. It's far beyond uh, this room. Oop. You can't hear me yell. Is that better? Is that better? There we go. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. We have a few objectives here monetarily. We'll get into that in a moment. But m most importantly, we're here to destigmatize mental illness suicide prevention, these are our main objectives. We do that through community, we do that through outreach. And when I say outreach, I mean you reach out to the guy next to you and you say, hey, how you doing? Long gone are the days that real men don't cry. And at the end of the day, that's how a community is built. So that's, that's first and foremost in what we do. We opened up the community event uh, this year as a starting outreach to people beyond cyclists. Um, so we really want everybody here to talk about what we're doing, what it means to you, and see what we can do to, uh, to kind of destigmatize. All right, now back to the money. So, the, um, so how, do we, how do we raise money here? Um, there's a number of different ways. The ridership is, it's working here. The ridership and when you guys sign up for, for that, uh, basically supports the ride, the, the fees that you guys pay, which I, we know are not inexpensive compared to a regular ride, really covers everything that we do, the jerseys, the swag, everything in here. But we also have a number of different partners, sponsors, 
um, that really make this ride happen. Um, so what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to invite uh, the police that are here. We'd like to invite our sponsors up. I'd like the whole board to come up. And we'd like to um, have uh, Nami come up as well. Um, and if you can come on up, we're going to do a check presentation. And Lakes 105, all of our sponsors, please come on up. Police may be outside controlling all you unruly folks. Okay, there you go. So, so far, last year we donated $30,000 $30, to NAMI. So far, we're at that mark. Yeah. We're still going. So today, every time you guys buy a raffle ticket, buy a 50-50, anytime you buy a, a t-shirt, you buy a cycling jersey, that all is yet another, another part of what NAMI can do to bring help to people that can't access it. So thank you guys all for this very, very much. This is all from you. So thank you so much. My name is Patty Marsden. I am a member of the board and very honored to be here and so grateful for all of you. I'm a pastor of Newmarket Community Church. I serve on the board of NAMI as well. And mental illness and the process and the opportunity to destigmatize the whole topic is just near and dear to my heart. And so I just am so taken with so much gratitude again for all of you here today. And as I send us off with a blessing right before we hear this lovely lady sing, I'm going to invite you to please stand up. Look around the room. Look into the eyes of the people around you. Everyone is here for a reason. Everyone has a story to tell. Some of those stories they haven't dared to tell. Some people on the back of their jer jerseys have uh, the names of those loved ones that they're riding for. I invite you to, to find them today and ask them about who they're riding for and look around and ask everyone, why are you here today? And invite them to tell you their story. That's what it's all about. So as we move into the pea soup weather of Plymouth, Rumney, and all those other places, as we hit that tar that will be radiating all that heat back up at us today, I send you off with a blessing, first of safety, hydration, joy. Take it easy today. Take care of the person in front of you and behind you today. May God be with us today. May we be filled with joy and hope today. May we hold on so tightly to hope that we're holding on to it for those who can't hold on to it themselves. And may God be with you. Amen. Oh, say can you see so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose breast stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so that I fly. 
Thank you. That's just a, such a wonderful way to kind of cap us off before we go out there. Thank you very much. That, that was Addie Feifel, who's an incoming senior here at Holderness this year from, from Bow, New Hampshire. So just before we go out, I'm just going to talk through some logistics. And I don't think I introduced myself at the beginning. So those that, that don't know me, my name is Tom Dearborn, and I'm one of the, one of the planners here, obviously. Um, so don't stress. We're going to give you 20 minutes before we go, so you have time to make sure you got water in your bottles or Gatorade or whatever you're going to put in there, and do a bio break and get your helmets and all that sort of stuff. And we're going to meet right out front here in front of the fence. So in past years we've we've kind of done it by group, but this year we're going to send everybody out at at, at once. Um, it will be a lot of fun to have a big group all together. Great opportunity for a little drone video as well. Um, we have the state police who are here to assist, and um, unless the Holderness police are called out on an emergency, they're going to help us get out onto the, to the road here on 175A. Um, and uh, we're going to, though, have people line up in groups. So the first group up front will be the Century Riders, those people going over 100 miles. Um, can I have some uh, Century Rider captains raise your hand so that people can kind of identify you? We've got Eric, we've got... Phil, we've got, okay, we've got, we got some Proctor folks, we've got, um, uh, I think uh, Phil Peck is with them as well. So you guys are all gonna be up, up, up front. And then the 65 mile group will be behind them. I will be one of the captains for that. We've also got Heather and, uh, okay, we got Neil Fry. So with the three of us, everybody that's doing 65 miles, and then with the 44 mile group, we've got Doug Woodbury right there, so line up with him. And okay, perfect. And then on um, the uh, and, and Andy will be with the 44 mile group too. Um, don't speed through Plymouth. He's a police officer there. Um, and then on the 27 mile group, we've got Rob Cass who will be leading leading that group. So um, in addition to that, we will uh, be giving out lunch tickets and Kona ice tickets. They weren't in your bag. But as you finish here, um, after, the, after the ride, um, you can get those from Chris Byron right there. So one ticket will be good for uh, lunch at the food truck, and one will be good for uh, Kona Ice. And then those of you that are doing the 100-mile ride, we have food that we're going to ship out to you to Lyme. So we just want to make sure we have an accurate count of people going to Lyme when we're out front, because there are a few people that have shifted from uh, the 100-mile group down to the 65-mile group. So we'll just get a quick head count next to the... Uh, the Century Ride Captains. Um, we want to make sure that when you're um, done today that you are fully aware of the community event because this is the first time that we're doing it. We didn't do it do it last year and probably you've seen something in the emails and, 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 and we've alluded to that this morning. But we're going to have a fantastic community event uh, out here in the outfield all afternoon. We've got live music. I think Jim Terrell is probably already here. Jim is going to do some performing for us. And then um, we've got uh, regular music when Jim's not playing. We've, we'll have the food trucks, as I mentioned. We've got things like cornhole. We've got uh, some inflatable games. We've got all sorts of really, really fun stuff for you to do. The Strongman event, we're going to have a tyke race so um, kids can get to race on tricycles and little bikes. Uh, we've got face painting. Uh, we will also have resource groups here, so go and engage with those folks. We've got the Lakes Region Mental Health Center will be here. Uh, we've got Growing Roots. We've got um, Positive Tracks. We've got some veteran groups. We've got a couple of recovery groups like the Plymouth House and Recovery Services. So it's going to be a fantastic day, so please do engage with those people and stay just as, as long as you'd like. We'll kind of start uh, winding down 5, 6 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, and before we go, I think that we're going to have a drone kind of cruise around here. And sure. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, I'm going to add a couple things into what Tom was saying. Um, make sure you guys stick around for the tyke race. And if an adult ends up on a trike, well, so be it. <laughs> Josh Norris, easy, where are you? Um, the resource groups as well, take a look at some of those. You might be surprised what you find there. I know there's, my daughter's gonna be doing a, a thing where you can plant some uh, plant to plant, take it home with you. Uh, there's a bunch of other resource groups out there. 
pretty cool. Uh, Positive Tracks is a great supporter of, of young folks getting involved and, and doing things like this as well. So, um, Tom says stop talking. No, no, I said speak up. Um, the, um, so at the end here, I'm struggling today. At the end here, we're gonna have a drone fly around here. So what I would like everybody to do is let's get excited. Stay seated so the drone doesn't hit you. If it does, well, I don't know who you are. Um, <laughs> The, uh, so there, if we can keep the clap going for 30, maybe 45 seconds, it would be pretty cool. And then uh, on our way out of, out of here, there's a lot of twists and turns from a safety standpoint. Let's just go easy. We are gonna have a very controlled pace. So you, you Ricky racers out there, we're gonna go easy on the front side until we get past the common man onto Fairgrounds Road to keep it all together. That's all we got. We ready for some excitement? We are, but maybe you wanna talk about uh... Oh, and, uh, you know what, I missed that. I missed that, sorry. Um, so, so we started a thing this year which was just starting the fundraising, personal, personal fundraising. And people went on the, the website, which it can be clunky, we'll work on that, but they started raising money for NAMI. So our first prize was a Fuji gravel bike. Our second prize here for the most, the most personal raise is $250 common man gift certificate. Thank you, Alex, wherever you are. Yet, ag yet again, huge supporter of this. And then uh, and we've got a $100 gift bag and third prize is $250. So think about this, the, the game is still on. We'll do that towards the end of uh, the, the afternoon. If you got some friends that wanna chime in and give you some sponsorship dollars, it's yours to lose. There's a nice little tandem thing. Put your face in here. Get a fun, get a fun little, uh, a fun picture there. All right. Did I cover it all? Just real quick. Would all the volunteers come back here with me after we're done with the the drone and all that? Um, just for a quick couple minutes. 